Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Disco Elysium. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that he chose to join me today, even though we don't have Kim with us. But we're doing things that that maybe Kim doesn't... Uh, there's, there's not much that Kim can do. Hopefully we're doing things that there's not much that Kim can do. I well, went uh, past the canal, and uh, we're in, in the little village to the west. Is there a way to make a little money around here? Here for you. She lets out a dry chortle. No, officer. The only money we have here is some coins the drunks try hiding from their women and then forgot about. Under carts, boats, in little boxes, it's not hard to find. It isn't, yeah. All right, there's another topic I'd like to address. She nods, rinsing another piece of cloth. What's further down the coast? Not much. She replies and wipes her forehead. There's the abandoned church, the Dolorian Church of Humanity. It's been there since before my time, even. Why is it abandoned? Some things just don't fly, officer. She smiles a gap-toothed smile and smells the air. Look around. Who'd go to church here? They built it 300 years ago. Must have been nicer then. The Ecclesiastes have tried to get things going there. But things just keep happening. Crime, accidents, other things. The place never stays open. She frowns. It's a pity. This used to be such a nice church. What else is on down coast? Before you get to the church, there's some ruins, an apartment complex, or some kind of electrical plant. Run down bunch of houses, empty. Which is it then? Apartments or electrical plant? I don't know exactly. A pre-war place. It used to be something. She shrugs. Before the war. I wasn't here then, you know. Was born in Samara. Anything else of note? Of note? The old fish market up on the boardwalk. But it's closed. Who would want to come to a fish market here? No one. That's why it's closed. After a long pause, she adds. It was once a bustling place, back when I was young, and so was everyone else. Now, what catch we do bring in goes straight into a lorry for the Delta or somewhere else. That's it? There's gotta be more along the coast. What? You're one of those real estate people with big plans? If you want a development opportunity, you can check out the abandoned building over at Lensen. Used to be a supply depot. We think, sending goods and ammo across the bay. It's jammed shut though. We tried to get in, see if there was anything to sell or scavenge, but it's impossible. And now you know everything there is to know about this coast. She drops a bar of soap into the bucket with a splash. Tell me about yourself. Who exactly are you here? Me? No one. Just an old washerwoman. Mother called me Isabel, if that's what you're asking. And my married name is Sadie. Now it's your turn, Mr... Um, call me Harry. Why, I guess I will, Harry. Aye, it just rolls off the tongue. I used to know a Harry. Strong lad, but dumb as a rock. What happened to him? He did too many narcotics. So many, he fell off his boat and split his skull on a buoy. She rubs soap off her hands. Folks who saw it say his head cracked open like a melon. Nasty, nasty. I was um, asked to get your signature. I'm going to hand her the envelope. Eh? What's this about? She takes out the documents and squints her eyes. Come now, I can't read all this scribble. Tell me what it says. It's, it's just a real estate deal, nothing ominous. A deal with who? She narrows her eyes and then scoffs. It's the Debardier Union, isn't it? Yes, it's the Union. Thought so. The old woman inhales sharply. So what do the Clare brothers want this time? Evart wants to turn part of the village into a little youth center. 
Huh. She lifts the paper very close to her face and studies it intently. I might be half blind, but it looks like part of the village is gonna be a street. The best part. The part we need to get out of our houses. Have you asked Lillian about this? I won't even consider signing till I know she's on board. She hands the envelope back. Wait, where can I find her? She's right over there. She points towards the jetty. The dark head woman, leaning over the railing. I'll go ask her first then. Yes. She replies, slowly nodding. You do that. Can't let fat Mr. Clear down now, can you? Goodbye, I'm off. She does not like Claire. Or uh, Evart. Wait, fat? Mr. Claire? Claire Evart? Evart Claire? Yeah, this. I forget. I forget his name. You can't see into the house from this angle. I think this is the house that she gave us the key for, because this was locked before. Let's go on in. The door has seen better days. The layer of paint has started to peel off due to the salt and wind from the sea. Even the lock looks slightly rusted. Unlock the shack door with a key. The key turns with a satisfying click. You can enter the shack now. And we have a place to sleep. That's very important. A Korojev jacket. Which I will take. Naturally. What is it? This swanky checkered jacket flatters your form in a way that makes you feel the fun kind of serious. It has really nice roomy pockets too. And uh, adds to my logic because checkmate. Mm. Uh, well, it's nice to have logic jackets. You see the waves, the sea, a church. An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see the reflection of your face in it, such as it is, without the expression. It's just hairy. Let the mirror be for now. So we could check our expression here as well, interestingly enough. The floorboards creak under your step. They do, don't they? Old science fiction magazines, books about bird watching, an almanac from 39. I'm not 100% sure if it's a uni universally. That's not universal wouldn't be the the term, but if if um if it's generally it's if it's part of the cultural zeitgeist, uh, zeitgeist to know what an almanac is. Um but I believe that's just a, a yearly publication by the church. I think Ooh, there's food over there. On the table, you see a bowl of water, a rough soap, and next to it, a small hand mirror. A straight razor soaks inside the wash basin. Is shaving the right call? The water reflects back a vague image of your face. Nose bulbous and red. Hair unkempt. Wrinkles lining the eyes and forehead. The stash is gigantic. You'll be looking like a pansy without the chops. A fucking pansy. A fresh start looms ahead. Clean yourself up and be born anew. Mm-hmm. That's hand-eye coordination. Let's get ready for that, because I don't want to cut myself. Unfortunately, I only have one. The pinball maker's coat. It's this thing that I'm wearing. Let's do it. Time to shave. Get these mutton chops off. Like an artist with a brush or a master swordsman, you use the small mirror and the straight razor with some soap to remove all that unkempt hair from below the nose line. The sharp blade chafes against your skin, producing a scratching sound. The surface underneath the beard feels tender, the air brushing against it chilly. I'm going to feel my clean shaven cheeks. They feel so smooth, surprisingly so. A feeling of freshness overcomes you, as if you just came from a cold bath. Was shaving the right call? The water reflects back a vague image of your clean-shaven face. 
Despite the bulbous nose, unkempt hair, and persistent swelling, you look a little younger, maybe. You almost look like a professional. Your face, such as it is, a regular human face, sans expression. Sans expression. And if you don't know what sans means, it means without. It's, uh, yeah. Do I have access to my face, though? I thought there was, like, a screen where we could look at our face. Or is it just... Yeah, it's when we talk to the Furies, I think. I don't know. Either way, we're good. And uh, we look even more like a miserable git than uh, we usually do. This intricate heat engine hums quietly, giving out pleasant warmth. A brisk coastal wind still howls against the window of the shack. Occasionally, the waves crawl in under the foundation, producing a low hum. I'm gonna listen. The room feels muffled, like you pulled your hat over your ears. Outside, it is cold and windy, but you're inside, and it feels safe and warm. What is this place to you? This is this voice is showing up more and more, isn't it? My forward base for the coastal part of the operation. Overhead, you hear the forlorn shriek of seagulls. Far below the birds, a wooden boardwalk filled with abandoned stands, tables and benches, echoes from a long lost time. A middle-aged man stands in a rundown shack on the edge of a fishing village. Listening to the heater hum on the wall. Thank you, Strange Sensation, for a fair assessment of the current situation. Outside, the howl of the wind has picked up. The waves crash against the stilts again. It's as if you think the thought, but in someone else's voice. Look under the floorboards. I think it in somebody else's voice. can't actually look under the floorboards. Do I need this? I probably would, wouldn't I? Maybe it's the bed. I doubt it. The bed is comforting, if a bit run down. Still, you've earned a rest. No time to rest yet. I think I either might need to increase my perception. Or something else needs to happen. Like having Kim here. It could be. Or I need to look under the floorboards outside. Inside you hear the cozy sound of some kind of heater. Sputtering. Hmm. Okay, I don't think this is going to be needed on my hand, or in my hand. Can I actually go over there? I can't. Suliram, Suliram, she says. That's curious. Maybe it's only on a second uh, venture in here. I don't think so. Okay. Just because we only have one point, though. Ah. <sighs> I was going to invest in my perception. Maybe I should. I mean, this is a pretty sweet... It's a pretty sweet score. If I can't look under the floorboards... Yeah, it's fine. We can try it later when Kim is with us or something. I think he goes in there with us as well. And there she is. That's the lady. I don't forget her name, though. Got some plastic tear. What are these doing in the fit? In the fish? What do you mean these? Oh, I found something. Franco-Nigerian cavalry boots. Hmm. Haven't seen the RCM around for ages, she says. So we got some cavalry boots. Didn't we not have shivers on these, by the way? Good old calf-length cavalry boots. Mount that horse and ride into the night. The heel comes in handy too. It definitely makes you some good five centimeters taller, but could it be that it's also making you sharper, more perceptive, 
to your surroundings now that you've gained a new perspective. Um, yeah, a view from above. They look marginally better than my current shoes. That is that. Maybe I'm going to be able to look into the floorboards after, or because of this. This boat is floating freely in the water, unmoored. A little bit of money. We're actually, we're actually making good progress on the money front. The planks creak beneath your weight. Where is this going? The ladder leads to a school of fish swimming in the kelp. Hmm. Obviously nowhere. That's where it's going. Let's get ready to scam some fools. Let's do it. Let's do this. Hi, officer. A woman in a raincoat stands on the quay, considering an overturned boat. A sword in a scabbard hangs from her hip. Anything I can help you with? That depends. Where are we exactly? A fishing village on the seashore. She looks around. This place doesn't really have a name. It's sometimes called Illicibla. Illicibla means unreadable, I believe. Why? The sign on the street leading here is illegible. Has been since they built this place. The wind rattles her earrings. Uh, as always, I am the lawbringer. Are you now? She smirks. There are a lot of law bringers around Martinez, but not a lot of law. I guess men with authority have their quirks. She waves you off. What brings you here, law bringer? I got a thought because of that. Bringing of the law. Law jaw. We got a minus one because of a weird jaw, apparently. Hey, so a little observation. It's all cool, man. Don't freak out. But every time you say, I am the law, and you say it a lot, it's uh, basically hello for you. Your jaw does this weird thing. It sort of shifts sideways, hanging off your face at a jaunty angle while the word law sounds oddly guttural and low. It's strange. You wouldn't notice it, but after saying you're the law 80,000 times, the question does come up. Why do you have Law Jaw? Capital L, capital J. That sounds like a good time. That sound, sounds like a lovely time. Let's go. Unlockable. Internalize. And uh, we have a weird jaw for a little bit, but it's fine. Because it's, it's only going to be almost three hours. I've got questions. Uh, the first is, what's your name? The name is Lillian. People call me Net Picker. She gestures towards the fishnets. I think I have time for questions. And that was actually the second one. Indeed, you're always confused as to your whereabouts. Ask her about the cool sword. Helps to break the ice. Nice sword. I'm going to point at the saber on her hip. Does it come with a story? Unfortunately, the factory sold this one with a three-year warranty instead of a story. She smiles at her own joke. <laughs> it's to intimidate folks, mostly. Uh, it is imposing. I'm gonna nod. It's a regular mass-produced sword, like a shovel or an axe. Nothing fancy, just for intimidation. Why do you need intimidation tactics? From time to time, people need a lesson in respect. That's just the way it is. Back in the day, I caught the eyes of many men. <laughs> she adds, tittering. And believe me, men need a lesson in manners from time to time. Why don't more women arm themselves if it's so effective? What makes you think we haven't? She smiles. <laughs> the truth is that almost everyone in this life is scared and tired and stupid and too dull for that. That goes for men too. But they put on an act for us. Pretend like everything's good and living in shit doesn't bother them. Like anyone falls for that. That does not go for real men. It does not go for you. Show her. Show her the wonder. I'm a proper man. Believe me. Oh? She shakes her head, smiling faintly. <laughs> Believe me. Everyone here is a proper man. Must be something about poverty that makes all the men real. Sounds like she prefers her men to be less real. Can I borrow that sword? No. I'm afraid not. 
Her eyes are smiling as her hand moves to the hilt. Tempting to confiscate the blade I used to keep these animals in check. You would put me in an early grave. So where are all the men now? Some went to patch their wounds, their lesson learned. Others were more thick-headed. She looks down. And one of them, I ended up marrying. Wait, why? If they're thick-headed... Guess I enjoyed the way he bled. Her expression doesn't change. It's hard to say if it's a joke. If it is, then why the melancholy? Where's your husband now? Gone. Gone? Coward. I would never leave anyone. Uh... She raises an eyebrow. Good for you. He, however, was lost to the waves. It's been quite a while now. Oh. He didn't respect the sea. Went out there, drunk like a skunk, and sure enough, one day, the boat was found floating empty. The bloated corpse turned up two weeks later. Now, before you tell me how sorry you are for my loss, know that it was four years ago, and I've moved on. There's only so much mourning you can do for a drunk with sinewy muscles. She really likes those muscles, though. It's in the way she pronounces sinewy. Time really is the best cure for sorrow, isn't it? Us working folk don't have the luxury to be bedsick with melancholy. She crosses her arms. I buried him, mourned for an appropriate amount of time, and went on. Life didn't really change that much for me and the kids. She glances at the village where the two little kids are playing with what looks like rocks. This is neither a touchy nor a very interesting topic for her. She looks like she's ready to go on a date with another... Better drunk. Ask her. Both of you could need some action. I wonder if both of us could. Don't know a good spot yet. Let's not let's not do that. Also, it's a heroic suggestion check. I definitely will miss it, but I definitely will ask it. I'm pretty sure I did it as well in my first playthrough, and it did not go well. Uh, I'm looking for someone. Uh, maybe you can help? Let's see. She tilts her head ever so slightly. Who are you looking for? Oh, yeah, so a couple of people. Uh, I'm looking for uh, missing cryptozoologists. Uh, she frowns, thinking. I don't think I know what these are. Care to elaborate? Um, yeah, people who look for animals, mainstream scientists, than I exist. Aha! She exclaims. Like snowmen. Snowmen? I haven't heard about those. Two old guys have been wandering around here, nose in sand, talking nonsense about snowmen and the like. Wait, the like? Right. She nods. Not only snowmen, also green men, monkey men, burning rhinos. You get the picture. Where did they go? I don't really know. Further down the peninsula, I guess. I mean, that's where they were heading. She points north. Who else are you looking for besides snowmen? Oh yeah, uh, a working class husband. Yeah, I'm not really looking for that anymore. Not much into the middle class ones either. She sighs. <sighs> I could use some landed gentry, but apparently they don't make those anymore. And if you don't know what that means, um, actually, I don't know where the word gentry comes from. Uh, but I think it might have to do with the word genteel. No, genteel is a different thing. Um, it's completely unrelated. Uh, it might have something to do with similar words from French and whatnot, but it basically means that she's talking about nobles, people who have houses and it has lands and all that. That's what landed means. The husband isn't for me, though. I'm, uh, I'm looking for him for his wife. I wish I could help you with that, but I haven't seen your working-class husband. Maybe I can help you find someone else. No, that's it. I'm, looking, uh, I'm not looking for anyone else right now. Well, how can I assist you then, officer? What do you do around here? Like I said, fish mostly. Sail the waves, take care of the kids, pick nets. Right now I'm tarring a little skiff. Is that enough to make a living? Sometimes I also walk to the beach to see what the sea has given up. The sea is full of surprises. This is what is called a conversation. You don't have to be guarded right now. I never thought the sea brought in anything particularly interesting. Would? Pieces of glass. Every once in a while we see dead bodies. Human, animal, fish, other odd sea creatures. 
I mine washed ashore once. Bottles, drugs also, lost cargo in general. She looks at the beach. Most of the time it's just wood and glass. Mines, mines, you need mines. A mine? The RCM could use a mine, where is it? Well, the RCM has to wait for another one because some army folks came by, took it in the middle of the bay and blew it up. She spits over the railing. The blast was surprisingly timid for such a huge spiky thing. Spiky? Must have been a naval contact mine. It must have then, because our interfacing knows all about this stuff. Um, I'll talk to you later, though. Be seeing you. I might actually do that check, the one about asking her on a date. But anyway, well, we're out of time for the day, so that's why we're done with her for right now. I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Disco Elysium. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video, but above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.